All right, so this is Saturday, um, day what, six? Yeah, it's got to be day six of the polyphasic sleep um, experiment. It's weird to call it ex an experiment, really, at this point. Um, everything's working really well. I I feel great. Um, awake, I dream almost every night now. Um, I can't really say I have a lot more time to do things. Um, being around, I think, definitely made this a little harder than what it would have been for somebody else. Um, but <coughs> I have a few tips out there for people who might be trying to do this themselves. First of all, um, I think that the idea of getting a good night's rest before you start is not really the best idea. I recommend actually going you know, 24 hours maybe without sleep before you start. The idea is to um, sleep deprive yourself so that when you do rest, you go straight to REM. Um, and in REM, you receive the majority of the benefits of sleeping. So, yeah, I, I recommend not sleeping for maybe a 24 hour period before beginning the naps. And most, some people do six naps. Um, for 24 hour period, I only do four because that's only that's the only time I in my schedule that I can. I'm in the army; I have a lot of things to do. I can't take six naps, six naps in a day. And um, the next thing I'm thinking about doing is moving to biphasic sleeping, which is where you just take two naps of 30 minutes each, and then I'll have 23 hours of uptime instead of 22. But um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with polyphasic for a couple of weeks. And um, when I do biphasic, I think my naps will be probably midnight and noon. I think would be the best times, uh, the, the easiest times really for me. Um, the naps, I don't think, have to be symmetrical. Oftentimes I'm kept at work late or I have to go to work early and I can't always make my naps on time and uh, they get pushed around a little bit but I don't I haven't noticed any negative effects of moving the naps around a few hours. Um, the negative effects I have noticed is oversleeping. Um, just don't do it. It's not worth it. Like I know when you wake up in the morning or when you wake up from your nap you feel just terrible and you're like oh I didn't get any sleep at all I should hit my alarm clock put 20 minutes more on there and you know go for round two of trying to sleep and this is a fallacy really because um, if you're not going to sleep then just keep going eventually your body's just going to be cr cr screaming out for sleep so bad that as soon as your head hits the pillow you're going to go to bed all so um, you may not know that you're going to sleep. Um, I, there were a couple times where I went to bed and I just I, and my alarm went off and I didn't know if I had been asleep or not. It seemed like the 20 minutes went by really fast, you know, which would be indicative of sleep time. But um, I really couldn't be, you know, 100% sure about whether or not I had slept. So if anybody out there is trying to do this, just like uh, stay in there, don't oversleep. Stick to your nap times when you sit down for a nap, 20, 20, 30 minutes. When that time's up, be up and ready to go. Um, set your alarm clocks far away from you so that you have to get up and move. Um, some people recommend having a lemon there ready for you to bite into. Uh, I don't, I, I didn't do anything like that, but definitely getting up and turning the lights on did a lot for me. Uh, if I got up and walked across the room to turn the lights on, um, oversleeping really wasn't my thing. I had two spells with oversleeping and uh, both times I woke up you know an hour of that uh, without an alarm clock and I had a dream both of the time so it's really um, oversleeping may, it may just be inevitable it's probably going to happen but don't be really discouraged if it does just keep on going at it and eventually you're going to make it over the hump like I did um, and I'll post again probably probably not every day like I was, but probably next week sometime to let you guys know how it's going. And uh, again, whenever I decide to go to biphasic sleeping.